All right, man, we are live. Clayton Gitz, man, it is so good to reconnect with you, brother. I hope uh, I hope you're doing well. It's so funny. You know, the first time um, you and I met was when I came over to EXP and uh, we were in a reversal of roles. You were interviewing me uh, as I embarked on my new endeavor at EXP. And, and so uh, I'm going to return the favor for you now, brother, and, and uh, hopefully get some uh, get some good value uh, out of you today for uh, those watching and listening. Um, I know a lot of people are going to want to hear your story, um, you know, about why you, why ultimately you came to EXP. So I'm excited for you to share that today. Yeah, man. So hey, where'd you where'd get you all your, your, your son from? from? You got, you got yeah, going on. I was out on the boat this weekend, man. It was Labor Day. You know what I mean? So we got I, we took the family out on the boat this weekend, had a good time, man. So I got, you can see, yeah, I got a little, I got a little, Got a little shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's um, there's this. Uh, I just read about this um, uh, this new research that came up with. It's called um, uh, this this product that came out of this research called sunscreen. Um, <laughs> oh, that just came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm getting the vitamin D before it gets real cold. You know what I mean? You're in Richmond, man. You know what I'm talking about. It's getting real cold real quick. You're you're the man. You're the man. So. Um, so yeah, no, no, life is good. So um, yeah, I'm, Mike, I'm happy to just kind of share a little bit about my my story. If you think uh, if you think that's the way to to go here, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Why don't we do this? I don't spend a lot of time on like you know why you got into real estate and you know your production and all that, but I, I just I, I do that really kind of to set the stage for uh, for those interested. And um, so I'll come right out of the gate and and just ask you know how long have you been in real estate? Uh, so since 2005. So what's that? 13 years. Okay. So 2005, you started yep. into real estate. And where did you start at? I started out with a company called Long and Foster. Heard of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, go, ahead. go ahead. So, so yeah. So, um, you know, and, and I think it's, I think it's uh, important to, to, I, I'm reading the sign behind you there, Mike. And, and um, I, I love, I mean, that's one of my, mo my mottos. Yeah. Never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. I mean, make, make a, you know, make a life not just a living, and and that that's that's something I think about a lot, and and one of the reasons why, you know, I think we're having this conversation today, and one of the reasons that that my my journey, uh, in particular, has led me to this point, and frankly, to this to this company. So, you know, really, um, it it all started for me, like I said, with Long and Foster back in two thousand and five, when, you know, I got into real estate after having a, a not so great experience with uh, with uh, you know buying my first house with my realtor. Uh, I think a lot of uh, agents. Uh, I've asked that. I've asked that question over the years. You know, how many how many of you are actually in the business because you've had a bad experience with a realtor? And, and hands always go up. So it's a, a, apparently not uncommon to have a bad experience with a realtor. But I did, and um, I kind of took a back, took a step back from that situation and said, you know what? I really think that that I can I can do a better job than what this person just did for me. Uh, and, and for my family. So uh, I jumped into real estate in 2005. I married the love of my life and I found out that I had cancer all in the same, uh, all in the same year. So it was a, you know, it was a pretty busy year for me. And, and, wow. um, and uh, is, is a video. Okay. Is, is everything is, is coming yeah, through. Okay? Calling, brother. Everything is right. good. Good quality. Yeah. So, um, so uh, you know, so, so I started with a company called Long and Foster and frankly Mike I started there because in 2005 you know there was there was Long and Foster there was Remax there was Coldwell Banker there was Century 21 I mean you know those were that's just that's just really what you had right um, so I, I started there in 2005 and in 2006 I was uh, recruited if you will by this new uh, real estate model at least it was new in 2006 in Richmond Virginia a company called Keller Williams and um, you know, a, a, a recruiter invited me out for for a beer, and uh, I said yes. And we went and had a beer, and he told me about this new model and and how you could um, you could uh, unlock uh, additional residual income streams. Um, you know, and, and I always tell people this, Mike, and I I, I think it's uh, and I just told my team this. I just had a we just had our, our weekly meeting, and and I said, you know, guys, you know, people don't think about the future until it's the future. And if you look at the statistics, Mike, it is. It's frightening, man, in terms of how many people are actually prepared to take a step back and ease up on the gas pedal and, and, and you know, do what you want to do for a little bit instead of constantly trading our time for money. You know, I think we're in this culture right now where, where it, it's for whatever reason, it's just it's like what we do, you know, 
and especially as real estate agents, I mean, we're going six, seven days a week. I mean, that that's just what we do. And it's the profession that we chose that we've chosen. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not complaining. But at some point, you know, in the beginning, when you don't have children and you don't have responsibilities and you don't have a spouse and you don't have, you know, all this st stuff, it's not it may not be that big of a deal. But when you start missing your baby's, you know, swim meets and or you're on the phone constantly at their swim meets or you're on vacation and you get that text message from a client. Hey, I want you to show me this uh, this property. Well, you're two hours away, you know, and you got to drive back from your family's lake vacation to go show a house. That stuff catches up with you mentally. So uh, very early on, when I when I found out about Keller Williams in 2006, I was like, man, sign me up. I mean, this this sounds too good to be true because I wanted so badly to have that 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 uh, that freedom, and that's what I thought that Keller Williams was going to uh, was going to offer. So I made that transition in 2006, stayed there for 11 years. And I know you've heard this before, Mike. Um, had 11 amazing years, man. I mean, I I, I just I, I love my time there. And it wasn't until I had a very similar experience at Keller Williams, um, you know, when I was with Long and Foster and Keller Williams came along. So in 2015, um, after my cancer came back for the second time and I had this, this mortality motivation moment, this clarity where I was like, you know what? Okay, God, like, you know, it, I, I hear you now. And, um, and, and, and I'm done. Like I'm done living my life on someone else's terms. I'm done. And I'm going to start living my life. This, you know, this is my journey, living my life for what I believe God has called me to do. And, and, it, and it's just if you really take the time to listen and, and spend time in prayer and talking to talking to, you know, who I believe is, is the creator. It, you know, you can discern where you're supposed to be and where you're not supposed to be. And for me, um, it became very clear. So I took a year off from my business, you know, as I was figuring that out. And then uh, along the course of over the course of that year. This new real estate model, just like it happened, you know, 12, 13 years prior, showed up in, in my market. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, here we go again, the next evolution of the real estate model. And it was a very, very easy decision for me. And uh, my team and I moved over. There were 15 of us at the time. We moved over um, in January of 2017. And, and that's where we are today. Dude. You have such an amazing story, man. It is always such a pleasure to talk to you. And I, I do, I, I'm glad we got to reconnect, you know, kind of uh, in, in this in this arena, because like for you, I, I think more people need to hear your story because I think, you know, there's a lot of people that will resonate with you. So, so okay, so you let's back up just a little bit. So, okay, so you have this team of 15 agents, right? And so your, your production was what in 17? When did you guys come over? We came over January of 2017. So um, let's see. So 2015, uh, we did 76 million. Then I took that. I mean, I was off that whole year, uh, uh, about April of that year until September of 2016. In 2016, we did about 64 million with me completely out of production. Um, and this year, we're we're um, I'm still out of production. Uh, this year, we're back up to about. Um, Will be right around eighty million this year. Okay, so you're you've you've achieved the seventh level of real estate. In other words, you're you're working more of a, of, of a CEO type role where you're kind of the visionary uh, for where the business is going. Correct. Uh, well, for me, again, you know, I, I think there's there's um, uh, the, you know there there are a lot of different ways you can you can do this. For me, I just I hired a CEO. Um, I'm just a recruiter. And, really? and again, okay. It's what I, it's what I love to do. Uh, I I love motivating, leading, coaching, uh, recruiting. It's it's my passion, and that's why you know this this uh, this particular model makes so much made so much uh, sense for me because it gave me a platform to do. I, I just man, I just want to have have more impact, yeah. you know. And and this this model has has given me the ability to have more impact um, on people around the country, soon to be around the world. So you've truly replaced yourself in the business and you're exclusively working on just recruiting agents, growing your team um, and growing your, your revenue share group. I'm still involved with um, with some training and some coaching on my team uh, and then just some, you know, some higher level executive leadership meetings. Um, and, and let me say this, Mike, you know, because I think this is important. Um, I, I took a step when, you know, getting out of production, I took a step back financially to remove myself from production in order to do what I what I 
what I want to do, you know, what, where I where I believe that I'm going to have a greater impact. Um, so I, I took a step back. There's no question. I mean, you pull yourself out of production, um, you know, for most of us that are operating at, at you know, you call it seventh, seventh level. I mean, I'm, yes, I'm seventh level right now, but I'm, I'm doing my best to stay there. Right. Because because when you're in production, you're 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 typically at this level, you're just working with your seller clients and that's your biggest source of revenue. So when you remove yourself from that and you cut that revenue uh, source in half, if not by 75 or or 70 or 65 percent, whatever the numbers are, yeah. um, you got to be careful. You got you got to be careful. You got to pay attention to the numbers. And and uh, it's really helped me pay much closer attention to the numbers. It helps, man. You know, I just said this to my team as well. Um, you know, real estate is easy. I've always felt that way. Real estate is is uh, is not the problem. You and I are the problem. You know, we're so jacked up as 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 people. The foundation uh, of which we 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 live and lay our lives is just so. You know, uh, and maybe it's not the entire foundation. Maybe it's just the corner, right? Maybe it's our relationship with our spouse is not where it needs to be. Maybe it's financially. You know, we're carrying too much debt. Maybe physically, man, if you can't show up every day and feel good about yourself and have energy, you can't expect to get on the phone and 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 have an impact on on home buyers and sellers and 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 um, you know and lead them the way that they need to be led. Uh, so it's so it's all those area, all those foundational levels, man. If you can really focus on that, I think Jim Rohn used to say, "Learn to work harder on yourself than you do anything else," and then every, everything else just works itself out. So. Um, so I, I think that's the key, man. And, and I found over the past, I don't know, gosh, 15 years that the more I take a step back and work on myself, that, that I, I just start to attract the types of relationships, um, you know, that, that I really want in my life. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? So, so it's, 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 you, for me, for it's me, like you, the way I showed up in my business, right, is, and we all go through this as team leaders is, you know, you're the, like, you're the, like, you're the kind of the, you're the one that that does all the production, right? Everything everything is centered around you and your business, right? First, you start off as a single agent operator, and then you know you make your first hire, and it's an admin, and then you make your second hire, and it could be another admin or a buyer specialist. But you go through this natural evolution, and we all do it. And so for you, it's like, and then you make a decision, right? And then you, and so you can get off at the on the, at whatever train station you want, whether that be. You know, you remain the top dog. In other words, you still go on listing appointments and maybe work an occasional buyer, or you know, you give all that away and then you just work as you know a CEO, or 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 or, or, or you're at the you know very top level, like where you're at, where you're saying, hey, you know what, I'm going to hire somebody to actually be the CEO, and I'm just going to do the stuff that I enjoy doing, which is going out and, and really training, right, working with agents who um, who are committed to growing their business, right, because yeah. you know that that's that's something that we like. We enjoy doing because we like seeing people who are like us because, you know, they're driven, they're ambitious, and we want to be able to give that to them. And then secondarily, you know, that that recruiting piece. So finding more people like that to backfill, right? Because that's what you enjoy doing. And so like, I get it, man, like you're willing to take less money in order to do what you want to do. And, you know, the, the really cool part about that is, you know, the difference between making $350,000 a year and $750,000 a year from a lifestyle perspective is not that different. It's just not that different. And, you know, and and, and so for me, it's like, especially you know, if you don't have any debt. Right. And, and so, so so what you did is you figured out, you know what? OK, so I could go out and make, you know, you know, a million dollars a year. Right. And and I, I wouldn't see my kids and I'd be doing all these things I don't want to do. Or I could make, you know, half a million dollars a year or whatever your number is. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll uh, you're, you're essentially you're giving that that those responsibilities back and you're trading it for the most precious resource. Right. Which is our time. Well, yeah, absolutely, Mike. And I, but I, I think it, it actually gets even better than that, you know, it, it because uh, and again, you know, I, I you and I could have chosen any model, you know, to to, to hang our hats on and, and or under. Um, the, the reason that I chose this model is because yes, I took a, I took a step back financially in the short term, but what it's, what it's allowing me to do is free my time up, um, so that I can focus on what I love doing, but also build a, a, an income stream that shows up regardless of whether or not 
I do. Yep. You know, and, it, and it's it's that right side quadrant money that that people you know people say they they uh, I ask people about the you know the cash flow quadrant all the time. They're like, yeah, yeah, I've heard of it, but but have you really? And and are you are you interested in living it? And if you are, well, then let's talk about how to how to get you there. Because because if if the reality is that eighty five percent of the wealth in this country lives on the right side of the quadrant, and we're all operating on the left side of the quadrant, what are we doing? Why are we only? Why are we operating in, on, on and also trading all of our time for money? Again, I just had this conversation with my team. What's the end game? You know, what's the end game for us? Is it is it to if it's to sell real estate when you're you know 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, and that's what you want to do? That's what you're passionate about. More power to you. That's great, and I'll help you get there. But if if you want to be able to show up when you want to show up, because it's where you want to show up then there's a better way. And it's not necessarily EXP. You know, there, there, there are multiple ways to operate um, on, on that right side quadrant where, you, where money is going to work for you. I just personally have, have for us as Realtors, have never seen a better platform ever. I don't, I don't know that it exists. Yep, I agree, I agree. So how is your, your group right now, your team, how are you currently structured? So, um, we have 12 uh, sales partners, uh, a full-time listing manager, full-time transaction manager, full-time courier, um, and uh, then, then me. And then I have a property management company as well. Okay, and, and so here's, here's what I think a lot of people are gonna wanna hear, brother. I think a lot of people are gonna wanna hear, okay, so you've got all these people, right? It's one thing when like you're one agent and you're making a decision to move to a different brokerage, whether that be EXP or Remax or Keller Williams, whatever, right? And then there is you um, who has, you know, 12 sales agents, you've got all these um, inner working parts, right? And so talk about like when you actually first heard about EXP and then the second part of that question being, how did you approach your team? Yeah, I mean that's that was an easy one for me, Mike. It's just opportunity, you know. I mean, I I um, watched a really good uh, webinar the other day that um, that Jay Kinder put on with a um, with a guy who I, I believe he's got a 850 person independent brokerage that's moving over to EXP, was which it is Chuck Fazio. Yeah, man, it's yeah. just that was such a good interview. Yeah. And uh, and I, I have I just really connected with him and what he said. He's just, just talking about again the foundation is the problem, not not real real estate's easy. Um, but I, I approached it the same way that 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 he did. I mean, this was opportunity for my team, who I care about uh, deeply, um, for them to be able to get a piece of of this of this this exp pie that they just didn't have access to uh, at at Keller Williams. They didn't have access to at uh, or wouldn't have access to it. Certainly, at Long and Foster. I mean, Mike, I met with a Long and Foster agent last week. Um, it's a large, uh, you know, traditional brick and mortar brokerage. And and you know, I, I, I there was a time and place. And I, I just I, I feel very very strongly about this. This agent just found out through her Buffini coach that she has paid this year. She's paid uh, her brokerage seventy thousand dollars so far, so far. And I said, I, I said to her, I said, well, well. Um, what's the value? Like what, what's the value proposition at this point? And she said, Clayton, I wouldn't be talking to, to you today because um, she's moving over um, to EXP. She said, I wouldn't be talking to you about EXP if, if I thought there was $70,000 worth of value at, uh, at this, at this model. So it was very easy for me to go to my team and, and, and share the opportunity with them and let them know that, that this was my vision in terms of how I was going to help them build out this right side quadrant. They can continue to sell real estate as long as they want to sell real estate. Mike, my sales manager in a year and a half is averaging $6,500 a month in revenue share, in passive revenue share. Her life is completely transformed. She's on a two week vacation right now. I don't even know where she is, like somewhere in, in over in Asia. So I don't know, like she doesn't have phone service. She doesn't have cell. That money pays for her mortgage, all of her living expenses, and she's having the time of her life and um, that's a gift, man. That's a gift that I, I've never been able to offer an agent before uh, outside of this model. So that's that. It was easy. It was easy for me to to, to relate to them, and all, I mean, and they got it. I mean, all of them. They all came with me. So what I'm hearing you say then is, so your approach was okay. You heard 
you heard about EXP, right? And I'm sure you did your due diligence as a team leader. And then you approached your team and the narrative was, hey, opportunity, right? And the oppor and when I say opportunity, um, you're speaking exclusively about um, revenue share, right? You've got, you've got this agent now who, did you say $6,500 a month? A month, my sales manager, yep. That is just insane, yeah. man. So she, she, yeah. Now, just you're because of the opportunity you provided, um, or 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 that you did your due diligence on, and then and then presented to them, she's now making sixty five hundred dollars a month in revenue share, right? Just because of of the decision that you made to come over. Correct. Yeah, Mike. I was going. I, listen, I was going independent. Okay. I mean, I was going independent because it was time. Um, you know, my brand absolutely can support itself on its own. Uh, so I was going to bring all that money in house that that you know that Keller Williams in, in this case was um, was you know collecting. I was going to bring all that back in house and go independent before I found out about about EXP. You know, so so the the argument is, and 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 I run into this all the time, and it, it kind of boggles my mind a little bit. We have access to better technology than these brokerages do. We have access to to better social media marketing. Than any of these brokerages do. You know, there are companies that have dedicated their their entire existence to building out the bit, and that's the great thing about competition, right? Um, you know, you, you've all of my technology is that 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 I had with Keller Williams had nothing to do with Keller Williams, so it was very easy for me to to pick up and just move to wherever, go independent, uh, EXP, and I could do the same thing. To my brand is my brand. I could I could move that anywhere. So. So I just feel very strongly about that. I don't under. I, I also don't understand why agents are so uh, willing if they really take a step back and say, okay, if I really lock in to this to this you know X Y Z company's technology and all their systems and platforms, how easy is it going to be for me to detach myself from this if if I if I had to, mm -hmm. you know if if it, so um, that that's another argument that that I think is is worth is worth having. Uh, it, you know, my technology came with me and it's, it's, um, uh, I, I love the cloud. Yeah. I, it's something that I take advantage of, of almost every day when I have a question, uh, cause this is a, this is a fast moving machine here and, and issues come up and, and, uh, it's really cool to be able to just log in right here from my laptop anywhere and pop in there and have questions answered in a matter of typically in a matter of seconds. Yep, agreed. Yeah, so, agreed. So let me ask you this, man. Because one thing I've always wondered about, about is like, I have conversations on, on a, a regular basis. Regular I'm basis. Basis. You hear that? You hear that? I'm good. Okay. Let me see. Maybe maybe it's just me. But anyway, um, the the thing I always wonder about, like the mindset of you know, it, okay, so we made the decision, right? We heard about it, we did our due diligence, and we made the decision because we thought that ultimately it was the best thing, not only for us, but for our teams. But, you know, we have conversations all the time with Cobalt Banker agents or Remax agents. And, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it resonates um, some of the time. And I'm just curious as to why you think that is. Yeah. So uh, for me, I think that the agent has either been branding that particular brand for however many years. So, so if, if you're paying, in my previous example, if you're paying, um, let's just say Long & Foster, for example, $70,000 a year minimum to brand Long & Foster, then I think you're doing yourself a disservice. And it's a beautiful business model uh, if you're Long & Foster. Yeah. You know, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you own Long & Foster. Um, but it's not if you're an agent. So I think that, that branding yourself in the marketplace is huge. It's something that Gary Keller talked a lot about. It's one of the reasons that I that I stayed there as long as I did, and it's something that that EXP is um, is very passionate about as well. They, your brand is your brand. So I think to answer your question, Mike, um, they're so connected to the brand that the idea of pulling away from that brand, they lose their identity because their identity is that brand. So yeah. so that's a piece of it. The other piece of it, it's it is the job of all of these brokerages, EXP included, to give us an environment that, you know, you know, uh, Glenn wanted to, Glenn Sanford, the founder of EXP, wanted to create an environment, uh, a business, uh, and this is Glenn talking, not me, where it would be irresponsible for agents to not be at EXP. Like that, that was his vision. 
And and I just think that's so cool. And I, I think he's done it. Like it, at least irresponsible for agents not to take a, a hard look at this, a really hard look at this. Not to say that I couldn't go anywhere or you couldn't go anywhere or any agent that knows what they're doing and be successful. I can go anywhere and sell real estate, but there is no other company on the planet. It just doesn't exist where, where I, I have access to so much opportunity, to so much opportunity and so many relationships. And Mike, the other piece about this that I'm really beginning to understand is the collaboration that you and I have access to. You know, the fact that you can call me at any time and say, Clayton, hey, I need help with this. And boom, I'm there. You know why? Because we're because of the common stock. Because the more I help you grow and the more you and I attract quality people to this model, the more it helps the stock. It's just like working for Google or, or any other common stock company. So that's a beautiful piece uh, that, that's built into this model. Well, not only that, and, 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 and how many times can you, uh, like, you, you, like you, we'll have mornings where we we'll have mornings where we take agents to uh, a training uh, class with Greg or, or, or Chris Johnson, or like Chris top agents in the industry, are now training, are, are now training, are, are now training are, when you talk about collaboration, talk about collaboration, at the yeah. highest level. So, yeah. So, you know, one other thing you I know, want. One other, other thing I want, I don't want, I don't want um, to change is like the change is like, 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 from this. Like, like, so like from your top students. Are you getting that? Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, let me see if I can see. This. I'm gonna move to my earbuds and see if that clears it up. All right, we'll Man, see. I need, a, I need a haircut. Your hair looks good, brother. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's good. Good. Awesome. Here. <laughs> okay, to me, okay, I, I think. It's good on my end. All right, this is perfect. All right, we're back. Yep. yep. So, um, okay, so real quick. So where I was going with that is that, you know, you, what I've heard other people say is that, and I've talked to a lot of other agents who run, you know, mega teams like we do, and it seems like all of them, they, they go through the process um, fairly similarly in that they invite kind of their uh, their leadership group in and then they approach the leadership group and then it, the message kind of goes out from there. Is, is that kind of how is that kind of how you did it? Or did you just did you say, all right, hey, everybody, one big group. We're having a, you know, a meeting. I got a, a special announcement to make. How, how exactly did you do that? That's a great question. So I, I got a couple of my key leaders on board first because I knew if I knew if I got them on board that it would it would you know pretty much be smooth sailing. So I got my key leaders on board, uh, and then we had a, a a big meeting with everybody, and I just introduced the opportunity. And you know, but but here's the other thing, Mike. You know, I've made a decision that if everybody on my team said I'm not coming with you, I was still going. I I'd, I'd made up my mind. Like I saw the. I saw the opportunity for, for myself and for my family and the ability, you know, what, what a lot of people don't know, Mike, I didn't share this with you. When I took a year off from my real estate business, when my cancer came back for the second time, um, you know, I just, just to kind of figure things out and, you know, and to be fair, I was never, you know, I was never sick, if you will. Um, uh, was very fortunate that I, I didn't go through what a lot of people go through when, when they get that diagnosis. But, um, but so I took a year off just to, just to really kind of, you know, pray and, and figure out where, where the Lord wanted me. And um, uh, I spent a lot of that year in my wife's business. And, and what I learned, and she, she has a, a business in the health and nutrition space that is uh, one of the fastest growing in the country. Her business is one of the fastest growing in the country. And we built that. We've been building that together. And what I learned is I crave – I mean, you know, I watched her get up every day for four years at 4.45 in the morning on fire to serve because she was literally changing people's lives, literally changing people's lives. And what EXP has given me, man, is, it, and, and what I believe it's given my agents, um, is an opportunity to impact people at a, at a deeper level. You know, because my, my job now is to help my agents. You know, to help my agents, is to, is to recruit and to help my agents grow. Uh, financially, physically, spiritually, mentally, in any way that I can pour into them, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but I shared with you my sales manager a few minutes ago. You know, what I didn't share with you is that, uh, you know, Sarah's a single mom and Sarah had no exit strategy. 
you know, and she's in her fifties, no exit strategy. I mean, she was going to be selling real estate for the rest of her life. She would slow down, Mike, maybe sell 10 houses a year instead of, you know, 40. Um, but this has changed her life. I mean, literally changed her life. And to be able to wake up every day and know that I can impact my agents at that level is, is huge for me. So I was coming regardless, regardless. That's awesome, man. And, and I, I, you know, for you, you when know, you say I, I, I was, I'm, I'm coming, I'm you know coming. what I mean? No, 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 no matter what I had made up my mind that, you know, um, when I heard about this and the opportunity that was presented, I, I, I was coming and there was nothing that was stopping me. And I totally resonate with that because I think ultimately we kind of made the same decision. I mean, it, for me, it happened really, really quickly. Like I heard about it and we, we had a couple of days to do our due diligence, maybe seven or 10 days, something like that. And we were right in the middle of opening a market center. Um, like we were supposed to be have ownership interest in that. And, and so for me, it was like, we had to make a, a, a I didn't want to get, I didn't want to go too far down that rabbit hole. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, before, because I didn't want to do that to them. You know what I mean? I didn't want to, I didn't want to commit all of my time, energy and resources and then just pull out at the last minute and then move to EXP. So, you know, ultimately we made the decision to come to EXP, but once we made it, what I found out, and you probably found this out as well, is that, you know, a lot of your team is, they're not loyal to, you know, what we call the brand or the brokerage, they're loyal to you, right? And so you're, you're steering that ship, brother. And so when they, when, when, when you do your due diligence and you make a decision to do something, they're pretty sure that if you've made that decision, that that's something they're probably going to be interested in doing as well. Am I right? Yeah, that, that's right, man. Yeah. Especially if you spend enough time, you know, pouring into them and they know where your, where your heart is and that, that you're really, um, you know, you're, you're, you're not, you're not going to mislead them. Um, you know, there's, there's a trust factor there. And, and uh, so they, they trusted me enough to know that, that I've, had done my diligence and that I was, I was, I really had their, their best interest at heart as well as mine. So when you, okay, when you decided to make the move uh, and you moved over January 17, like you, you, how did you approach your broker? Because like, dude, I can imagine like, I mean, you've got 15 licenses or, or they're about, you're like, I mean, you're, you're, you're a $76 million producer um, that had to be a very challenging conversation for you to have with your broker or your team leader. It, it was, but again, I was there for so long, man. And I, I had such good relationships with, uh, specifically with the leadership team that, uh, it was just a really honest conversation, you know, and, and I, I just let them know, I just said, thank you. And I love you. And I, I appreciate everything that you guys have done. And, and I, I'm just, I'm doing this for, uh, again, for the opportunity, I just I see it. I see it as the, it, it really is a new model. Um, and I was doing it for myself and for my family. And it, it, it was no hard feelings on my end. And, and fortunately, they, um, um, you know, they, they made it very easy for me to, to transition. Did they try to do anything to stop you? Like, did they did they offer you anything or anything like that? Because we're no, running into I, that now. Yeah, no, 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 they, they did not. It was. Um, it really was a, uh, a, you know, best wishes and, and, and that was that. Well, that's good, man. I'm glad uh, because we're, we're, we're running into some of that now. And, and, um, and, and certainly, you know, we think, we think the model sells itself. Uh, and so, you know, we understand that we're providing value from a whole different level and that anything, any other brokerage could offer usually is just a temporary fix. Uh, I just like for me, you know, when I sit down and talk to like a Coldwell Banker agent, right, who comes in on a, you know, a 60 40 split or, or whatever that is in your marketplace, it, 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 to me, it seems not to resonate as much with those folks as it does with like the Keller Williams folks, because I think they understand the passive, not that it doesn't, you know what I mean, but it just seems like it's an easier conversation, um, certainly when you're talking to someone from Keller Williams. But I think ultimately you're right. I mean, when 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 you talk about Glenn saying, you know, he's in, he's he's delivering a model that makes it um, it makes it a no brainer, right, to make the decision to move over. I think everybody ultimately comes over in different stages anyway, right? You know, that you you have your early adopters, right, 
We're still exactly. a company with, with uh, what, I mean, 14, 15,000 agents, and there's so much opportunity right now in everybody's marketplace to go out, like you said, and build that, that, that revenue share yeah. um, that, to me, it's just I, I wake up every morning and I'm on fire. You talked about, you know, your wife waking up, you know, on fire. I mean, I wake up, I'm on fire every day, man. I'm just wondering who am I going to talk to? How can I spread this message, right? How can I change people's lives? Because yeah. literally, that's what you're doing, right? You talked about yeah. your sales manager. You changed her life. $6,500 yeah. a month in revenue share. That's life-changing money, man. Yeah. Well, and guess what? Guess how many lives that that she has impacted because of that $6,500? That is a direct reflection of the lives that she's impacted by sharing this opportunity. And keep in mind, you know, I, I think I think this is lost in translation. Like we're owners. You know, you and I are owners. So, you know, we, we've, we've crossed that threshold. We're not just agents out there just, you know, recruiting just to recruit. You know, I own, I own 40,000 shares of VXP stock. So I have a pretty large vested interest in, in seeing that this company is successful. I'm not out there sharing this opportunity with people that I don't want to be in business with. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm like, I'm staying clear with people that I don't want to be in business with. But, but if I think you're a good agent and I think that you could benefit from this model, I have no fear whatsoever about sharing this opportunity with you because here's what I, here's what I don't want. I don't want you, Mike. I don't want you calling me a year from now and saying to me, Clayton, why didn't you call me? I mean, why didn't you tell me about this opportunity a year ago, man? I mean, this thing has just, you know, we're supposed to be friends. What, I mean, that, that's how I'm looking at this. Like, I want you to know about this now and be informed so that, that you can make a decision. And I've also found out, Mike, that no almost always means not right now. I planted so many seeds last year and I've got so many people coming back um, that, that were not quite there last year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think it's really important if you're with EXP to just plant seeds. You know, just be, just keep building relationships, plant seeds. If you're here, if you're at EXP, you believe in this model, right? So there's no reason. I just, I just, again, I just had my meeting and reminded my agents that this company is exploding. I mean, I don't know if if Glenn could stop it if he wanted to at this point. So um, uh, the reason that people don't sell more real estate is fear. The reason that people don't share this opportunity more is fear in one form or another, in my humble opinion. You know, the reason my agents don't pick up their phone and make more calls is, 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 is real estate's a contact sport. So, so Mike, can we generate activity in this business? Absolutely. Of, of course, of course we can. And the way we generate activity is by cultivating relationships. It's the same, we're doing the same thing that with EXP with sharing the opportunity as we are in, in our real estate space. But a lot of people don't, they, they, they have a hard time making that, that, uh, that transition. Right. And, and I was, you know, we had our team meeting this morning as well. And, and I always talk about, you know, um, it, what, 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 I, what we're doing is no different than um, our lead generation now is is we're listing agents. Right. We're listing. We're literally that's what we're doing is we're listing. We're not listing buyers and sellers anymore. We're listing agents. And and so like my responsibility hasn't changed either. And, and, and you know, if, if I'm not performing or if not, I'm not hitting my goal, I got to take ownership in that just like they would uh, if they weren't hitting their goal, right? And so we can go out and, the, you know, the great thing about it is it with EXP is like, we just, I feel like we just have something so special to share. It's like, you're right. It's like, exactly. it's like not calling your seller for a price reduction when you know their house is overpriced, right? It's like, why would you do that? Although there are a lot of agents that don't make that call because they know it's a difficult phone call. It's like, and then the listing sells and then I pick it up because I'm really good at expireds, right? So, yeah. and then I, and then I get the price reduction because guess what? I asked, right? Yeah. I asked for it. Yeah. So it's no, it's no different than that. And, and so like for, for me, and I hope like, you know, for you as well, like I wake up every day, like I said, I'm super excited about the opportunity that this is presented and, and where we can go and where, where, where um, ultimately I think this ship is going to go. So for you, I'm curious though, what is the, what do you think the future looks like for you at EXP? moving into the next 12 months, three years, five years? Oh man, it just gets, it, it starts to get goofy. You know, I mean, we will hit, we, we will hit 400 agents um, by the end of this year across the country in our, in our, um, uh, in our revenue share group. Um, and then it, it's just, again, I, I couldn't stop it at this point, if, even if I wanted to. Um, we're having our best year uh, ever in real estate. So uh, it, here's the other cool thing. It, it's made it. It's made my real estate business so much more scalable 
you know, so I'm attracting um, more agents because of the opportunity that eXp offers. Uh, and and here's here's the other piece. When I'm when agents are plugging in, my retention with those agents are go, like my sales manager. She's not going anywhere. She's not going. Even if she did, she'd never leave eXp. So the ben we both still benefit from that relationship. It's a beautiful. It's it solved the problem of retention. It solved the problem of attraction. I mean, I, it's it's will be twenty agents strong by the end of this year. Not necessarily because of me. It's 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 uh, yeah. Mission Realty is great, but um, but EXP is offering something that I couldn't. Mm -hmm. That I couldn't even come close to offering. So it, it's if it, there's another layer. That EXP has added onto our real estate business that that man it's 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 priceless. That's awesome, and and so you know you knew ultimately that most most of your success now, if not all of it, um, at least from a sales perspective, is through those folks that you've employed to help convert your leads, who um you know who who've tapped into their own databases, and who you've trained um, to work the business like it should be worked. And so you knew like, okay, you've got uh, Mission Realty and you've got EXP. You knew that ultimately you couldn't provide at Mission Realty um, uh, the, the, the platform for them to, 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 to provide sustainability in their business. In other words, you could help them, you know, you could help them go out and, 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 and lead generate. You can help them go out and achieve their, their, uh, their uh, transaction goals, their revenue goals. But then there's that that added layer. So ultimately, and what I mean by that added layer is, is creating that um, that passive income stream right through revenue share and through stock. So those were the two missing components, right? And that those are just so you know, those are the two missing components in 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 every other brokerage's model. And yeah. so, but they're they're critical, right? Because without those without those two components. You're only as good as your last sale, right? That's it. You're only as good as your last sale, and you're on that what that proverbial transaction treadmill, where you know you you've just got to keep selling to make income, and and so to to add in those two additional layers, what back to your point has really like what what's really what's what's really helped your business is now you've not only have you got these great salespeople, but now you've provided these two extra components so that they'll never leave you, right? There, there's no reason why they would ever want to leave because you know they're making sixty five hundred dollars a month in revenue share. Uh, they they have stocks, right? And and so they're truly an owner with yeah. you of yeah. the company. Yeah, yeah. And again, I heard this on another webinar, and I thought it was I thought it was brilliant. Um, you know, we we've got a great culture, the best culture that that we've ever had. Um, we we uh, we offer a, a lot of value in terms of the business that we expose our agents to. Um, but Mike, we're not the only agents in my market that have good culture. We're not the only agents in my market that um, that expose their teams to a lot of leads, right? So, so then it becomes really hard to differentiate yourself from the next guy. You know, once you once once you've got a, a really competitive landscape in your market, which we do, um, the thing that's really beginning to differentiate us is EXP and the opportunity that EXP offers. And you know, and again, I'll I'll I'll, I'll continue to say it. I mean, I. We can sell real estate anywhere. I, I can I can go sell, and, and in fact, I can go into any market in the country and sell real estate. I know I can. I know I, can. I know how to sell real estate. I know how to build relationships. Uh, I'm not good at a lot of things, Mike, but I, I've been doing this for 11 years. I'm pretty good at it, and I can go do it anywhere. But I can't tap into this unbelievable, explosive network of agents that is that is going to be global. That's the thing, man. Like I, I've heard Australia next, like you know, um, then all the English-speaking countries, and then and then just you know, who knows from there. There are 15 million agents globally, and the last last time I heard, this could totally be hearsay, but but uh, uh, but who knows? Was two million agents is the vision with EXP? Well, clearly that would make us you know, 50 times bigger than any real estate company, um, or 10 times bigger than any real estate company uh, in, in history. Uh, we're already the fastest growing ever. Um, so I'm just super excited to be on this ride with you um, and with everybody else. I've never had more fun in real estate. I've never had more fun in real estate. So let me ask you this, and we'll wrap up here. Um, so to that agent or that broker out there who's listening to us or watching us right now, 
um, who's who's curious about EXP or perhaps just knows there's a better way to do business. What do you say to that that person? The person that's curious about EXP and what, Mike? So the person that's curious about EXP wants to learn a little bit more about it or just knows that that there's a better way to do business than they're currently doing business at their current brokerage. Uh, I would say to uh, pick up the phone or Facebook message you or me or anybody else that they have a relationship with uh, that is with EXP and just learn more. I mean, do your diligence. I mean, I, I, I am um, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I uh, found out about this opportunity when I did. Um, there's a small piece of me. I wish I would have found out about it uh, four or five years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, but I'm so grateful that I found out, you know, I mean, I just think in, in God's timing, man. So I, 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 you know, I just wouldn't wait to, to, to find out for yourself. I did, I did my diligence, you know, when I, when I found out about it, I did my due diligence, but it became very clear, very fast uh, of what this thing was and where it was going. There were 2,200 agents when I joined in January of 2017. I think we're, we're closing in on 15,000. Mm -hmm. um, it's out of control. I mean, it's just out of control. And, and so I would just, just pick up the phone, you know, just reach out. Awesome, man. And, awesome. and, and, and so, so how do people how connect do people with you if they have questions, have questions for you questions about your team? 804-833-9298 is my cell phone, 804-833-9298. Or you can certainly connect with me on, uh, on Facebook. That is, that is, that's it, man. So he just gave his cell phone number out. You guys heard that. So you can call Clayton direct if you guys want to connect with him, uh, have questions about EXP. Um, Clayton, man, hey, thanks again, brother. I know you're a busy guy and, and I so appreciate what uh, what uh, what you did today for us and sharing your story with, you. with our audience. And, and listen, brother, I hope we, we can reconnect and, uh, and and continue to build this thing out and just have fun. And and I will definitely see you in uh, in October, my friend. Hopefully you will be at uh, eXpCon. I'll see you in New Orleans. God bless you, brother. All right, brother. Signing off, man. Thanks. Clayton, thanks, brother.